hello there, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be having a quick walk around the woods in my local area, seeing what I can find in the way of animals and also tracks and signs. So if you have a few minutes to spare, please come with me. First thing of interest here, tinder fungus, grown on this old dead silver birch that looks like it's fallen down three, four years ago maybe. Another one coming here. It's got quite a lot more of these to come out by the looks of it. So this will be a very good source for tinder fungus. Nice. Just use my hand for scale there. It's pretty big. There's another big lad. Another little one coming out there. And two more here as well. Beautiful. And on what's left of the tree stump, we've got another three here. Nice. Just down behind me here, we've got what looks like a big patch of sand, which has been washed there by flood waters coming down this bank side. Hopefully there'll be some interesting prints there. Okay, straight away, you can see obvious deer prints here from roe deer. I'm a little bit perplexed as to what made that. Obviously something scratched that with claws. Uh, it's not enough of a print for me to gauge what that was. And in this standing silver birch tree, which is pretty dead, we've got a greater spotted woodpecker's hole. Not sure whether it was a breeding hole or a feeding hole or whether it was just digging it for the hell of it. There we go. Quite a well dug hole. Check the holes out in that. The old woodpeckers have been going to town there. Yeah, Absolutely savaged it. Now here's what I love about ancient woodland. You've got this birch tree which is really one strong wind away from falling down flat onto the forest floor. You've got all these gnarly growths, you've got moss growing there, you've got fungus coming out of it. It's absolutely beautiful to look at as well. And actually, where I've placed the tripod for the camera, I've just noticed another animal track or sign. There we go. Roe deer muck, obviously on one of their tracks here. I remember way back in the day when my mother was alive, she told me that there was witches in this wood, and that there was a circle of stones where they would all worship and so on. And one day when me and my brother were up here, we did find a big circle of stones. I found another circle here, but I don't think this is the one that we found all those years ago. Now this one is very old, but it's only about eight feet in diameter. It would normally continue around there, by the looks of it. That's not the one we found. Here's another woodpecker hole. Almost in reach, that one. Now I've just noticed this little trail that goes up towards the top of the wood here. A lot of brambles on it. I'll see if I can find any fur or anything on there to let us know what's been on this track. There's predator footprints there as well. We've got the pad, One, two, three, four fingers, and the little claws are coming out there. Be a badger, pretty small for a badger though. There's another, another partial one here as well. I'm gonna follow this and see what's up at the top of here. I've got a couple of buzzards above me here, common buzzards. Nice to see. Right up towards the top of this wood, there is what looks to be huge spoil heaps, which I'm presuming is from a badger set. It's one I've never noticed before, so I'm going to check that out. Oh, what a monster set. How on earth have I not noticed this before? God, it's massive. Obviously totally well used as well. Look at that, it goes on forever along there. What a beast. Hopefully if I hold the camera at this angle, it'll give you some idea of the size of the spoil heaps. Look at that, that's all been chucked out of the ground from these holes. They've practically levelled it off, it's more just like a road along the top of here, where it would normally be a very steep bank side. 
Well, if I wanted to get some good footage of badgers, I know where to come. But try as I might, I haven't been able to find any hair stuck on these brambles yet. You're less likely to find it from badgers because their hair is a lot more coarse. But there's definitely been foxes using this. You'd expect to see the odd little tuft of ginger fur on here. And there's none. That'll do me for a bit of tinder. I'm following the stream down here, and where it's pretty wet and ultimately very dark when all these leaves come out again, there's a lot of garlic. Wild garlic, very nice. Yeah, just right. I've seen a hare run out of here somewhere, shot away up the bank. Couldn't get the camera out in time to film it. But it looks like this is where it was sitting. That's got to be where it was sitting. Hair belly fluff all over the place. And that's actually still warm. <laughs> that's awesome. Listen to that. Not a sound coming from the wood. It's the middle of the day. It's quite a nice day, mid-February, and apart from the odd crow in the distance, it's absolutely silent. Very strange that a wood like this would be so silent. Here's another good tinder. This is teasel. It's pretty much a flash tinder in that it just goes woomph doesn't give off much heat, but if you break it up so that the flame can get into the inside bits of this seed head, it can hold the flame quite well. These stalks are very dry, so I'll have some of those as well. Now we've had quite a lot of floods lately and in the field here it looks like there's been a burst drain pumping up sand and water creating this little sandy patch and that's a great place to find prints. Yeah, there we've got a couple of partial fox prints. That's probably the most obvious one. Right then, we've got a rabbit set approximately 25 to 30 yards away. I'm going to see if I can call some of them out of the holes. Just zoom in so you can see there's nothing there at the moment. Let's see if we can get some out. There you go. Th what, two, three seconds? There's a rabbit out already. If you're hungry, that will be lunch. And that's how easy it is to call the rabbits back out of the holes. <laughs> ah, look at that, there's no mistake, and that's a good working rabbit hole. It's clean as a whistle. Muck all over the place. Very good, very active. Well that makes a change, I actually did see quite a lot of wildlife on that trip and also a few reasonable tracks and signs as well. Oh, here's an animal track or sign that I didn't want to see. I've just come back into my woodland here and at the side of my pond I've got part of a koi carp. That's otter, that has got otter written all over it. And that's just off last night because I was around here yesterday. So, I think I'll bring the lamp out tonight. Uh, 
and hopefully on the end of this video you might get a little bit of otter footage before I chase it off. Yep, here's another sign of otter. That stuff there is jelly out of a frog. It's obviously torn the frog to bits and that was the jelly from the eggs inside it. Ah, damn. Right, next morning, after the latest otter attack, good to get it on film, but I'm probably the only one who's not happy to see it. <laughs> uh, it's frosty, so there should be some signs around about there. That's where I saw it go out. Hopefully, hopefully there'll be tracks or some sort of sign. Here we go, on an otherwise dry piece of wood, we've got some frosted water here, ice. With a few little pine needles. It's where the otter's gone in or come out. Dragged its belly along there. Moving along a little bit, here's a really conclusive place where it's been coming in and out. <clears throat> Hopefully you can see all the dirt along the top of here and the water that's turned to ice. There's also a little bit of blood. fish scales all over the place. Now I just turned the camera around and we've got otter muck. Tell it's predatory because it's got the point on. Ah, dirty devils. I've obviously been using this to mark the territory. This is where a tree root comes along. It's slightly raised and it's covered in otter muck. Yeah, just for confirmation of where it's been coming in and out from the garden to the field and from the field to the garden. Just zoom in a little bit and on this otherwise dry wire fence, hopefully in the centre of the picture you'll be able to see three little icicles. That's off where the otter's back scraped along the wire, imparted a little bit of water and it's frozen. So that's a very, very obvious sign. Well, apart from the fact that it looks like I'm going to lose all my fish again to that damned otter, it's a beautiful morning. Birds are singing. I suppose it's mid to late February, so things want to be waking up now. But I've noticed in the morning, when you get a nice, bright, sunny morning, the dawn chorus is back. There's a few birds now, but when it warms up a little bit more, no kidding, this around here is just like a tropical rainforest. It's beautiful in the morning, you come out at first light, absolutely beautiful. Now with regard to that owl that I saw last night, that's when I was looking for the otter. And what I'm thinking is that that owl is working in conjunction with the otter. The otter pulls the fish out, mangles them up, owl comes down, eats the fish. That's why I generally don't see any, any signs of dead fish unless it's a really big one. Now, I think that's been going on for a while because some of those otter sprints or the otter muck where it was marking its territory at the backside of my pond, they look pretty old, certainly a week or so. So I think this relationship's been going on quite a while between the otter and the owl. Otter pulls the fish out, owl comes down, eats what's left. I come out in the morning, I don't see any signs of any dead fish. And that reminds me of something that I saw last year the last time we had an otter attack in the pond. I was sure that there was fish being killed because there were scales on the side, but there was never any signs of any big body parts anywhere. And that went on for weeks, and I was pretty sure that I'd lost pretty much all my fish by then. So I went out with a lamp, and I heard a noise around by the side of the pond. Put the lamp on, sure enough, here's the otter in the pond. I scanned across into the field, here's a fox, making a beeline to where myself and the otter were straight towards the pond so what I was thinking happened there is again otter's been pulling fish out eating little bits of them fox has come along said thank you very much and helped itself it's a great way of unrelated species working together
I always believe that information should be shared freely. That's why on my channel you'll not see any donate symbol. Don't really believe in that. I just like to make videos because that's my hobby. I just like to share information. If I learn something, it's it could be something that someone else doesn't know. You know, and if if there's ten thousand people watch a video, if there's only two people who don't know the information that's in that video. It's worth making. Even if it's taken me four hours to film and five hours to edit, it's still worth putting it out to get that information out there freely. I'm quite passionate about that. I've always done that. Even when I was making the ponds way back in the day, hence the name Pond Guru. That was my original reason for setting up the channel. I was doing instructional videos so that other people could make the ponds, not because I wanted all the work, because I only ever worked in my area, just so that they could see the techniques that I use and hopefully take some of those on board for their own projects. And that's what's really great about the bushcraft scene. There's so much more to learn than, than I ever did in the, in the pond side of things. And I would imagine that some of the people on here will have forgotten more than I'll ever learn, but it's the learning process that's so fascinating. I really love it. Earth, water, fire, air. All of those combined in the right order gives rise to a better spirit, a better feeling. And don't worry, I'm not just going to get all hippie on you, but just being outdoors, practicing skills that people have done for thousands of years, appreciating the wildlife, understanding the relationships between the different organisms that we share the earth with, really lifts the spirits, at least it does for me, and I'm sure it does for a lot of other people as well. So really we've got those five elemental forces in play when we're outdoors and practicing bushcraft, sharing our skills, new things, rediscovering old knowledge, it's probably no surprise that the five senses are linked to that as well. Touch, taste, smell, sight and hearing. That's another five. It's all around us. To switch on those senses when we're outdoors makes such a hell of a difference. A hell of a difference. Pretty good to share that. I don't normally share my feelings around a fire or in my videos, they're normally pretty straightforward, but I think that one was worth sharing. Well, that was a lovely little chat. <laughs> I better get back to work now. My house is only about half a mile away. This is a, an area of woodland I don't normally come to, but sometimes see a lot of wildlife in here. You can sometimes see deers, possibly the odd fox during the day as well. Unfortunately, I haven't seen any. Seen plenty of prints from them, and to me, that's as good as seeing the animal itself. Being aware enough to notice those little tracks and signs heightens your experience when you're outside. So learning those skills is very, very important. That's what I try and teach my kids when I'm out. You know, I'll show them a tree stump where a deer has rubbed its antlers to get rid of the velvet in the spring. I'll show them little tracks in the mud, show them different holes, different animal droppings and say, you know, can you guess what that was? Different nests, you know, what sort of nest is that? so much to learn and I'm 40 oh man what 42 43 maybe ages but a number uh, but there's still lots for me to learn I used to practically live outdoors when I was younger and I'm still learning stuff now it's just a never-ending cycle of learning and sharing knowledge to be passed down and really the, the advent of YouTube was an awesome godsend for sharing information and you know, I've shared information on all the things I've been involved with, which has been the metal detecting, the pond building, the aquarium trade, and now the bushcraft. That's kind of what I'm going to concentrate on going forward. And I've got a new camera as well. Hopefully you'll notice that this footage is a little bit better quality to the previous footage. As far as I can see on the viewfinder, the colours are a lot more vibrant. I've been very disappointed with the colours on my previous camera, so I've went out. I've splashed out quite a lot of money on a decent camcorder which I'll use when the weather's dry. My last one's like a waterproof jobby, it's a JVC Ev Evrio or something, quad proof, and the colour was crap. This one is a Panasonic oh, 870 or something. It's a pretty expensive camera, it shoots in ultra high definition. Can't edit that yet, but hopefully you should at very least get high definition, 1080. If you've liked this video, hit the like button share it with whoever you want to share it with on Facebook or Twitter or forums or anything like that if forums are still a thing now I don't know I'm not in any of that social sort of side of things 
The only place you'll find me is on YouTube, so if you want to check out more of what I've done, just visit my channel. I try and keep the videos in relevant playlists, so go down, see what interests you, watch a few videos, and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching.